Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing this jellyfish page. This is from um, Johanna Basford's um, weekly planner, so it's the 15th of Feb. Um, I'm going to be doing some pastels, which is why I've got this um, newspaper under here and a piece of paper here to keep protect all the book. Um, the idea is to do a pastel background and then have a fiddle around with the jellyfish. I'll show you what uh, as we go along and explain it. So I've got these pastels are what I use. These are the Mungio soft pastels and I'll show you. I've got a nice lovely lot in the tray and I'm trying to think about, I want blue um, for the um, water. I'm going to choose this colour and I'm going to scrape it straight onto the page in various places around the page. Now I'm going to go all over the jellyfish because I'm thinking that a jellyfish is usually see-through so I want to see the water through it but I'm going to darken it with pencil as well and it will be a bit of an experiment. That's nothing I've ever tried before and we'll see how it comes out. So I'm just scraping and scraping. I never know quite how much to do. So we'll start with that. And I've got a couple of um, cotton wool pads. One of them I'm just going to use to hold the page. And the other one I'm going to use to start to rub the colour into the paper. Because these pastels that I'm using are fairly new to me, then I, uh, I, haven't, I don't know how much I'm going to need to get the colour that I want which is why I just put a little bit on and actually you can see it's quite, um, it seems quite dark actually to me, it's, I feel that it's dark enough, but I'm just rubbing and rubbing gently and you see I do little circles up and down, different directions, now the idea is I don't want stripes on my page, I don't want to be able to see um, the lines once it's all done, but because pastel is quite soft you can um, keep playing with it until you get the effect that you want which is good and if it's too dark in one area you can add a little bit more you can take it away as well you can rub it out using a rubber which is often quite useful I'm just going and going at it it feels like it's extra dark here so what I'm going to do is swap pads use a clean one and rub on there to see if it will remove or push some of that colour out and it will come up onto the pad and spread it out more. Woo! That's what we try not to do, is crinkle the pages. Now I'm going to stop and have a look and think about how dark it is and how light it is. This bit needs more rubbing in but what I'm going to do is put a little bit more in the places where I feel it's too pale. So here, I feel it's too pale. Sorry for the scraping noise. It's like good fingernails on a blackboard, isn't it? A bit more here. Probably a bit there. Oh, maybe there. Maybe over here. So that'll do. Pop my knife down again. Do be careful using a knife if you're doing this. Um, I use that what I've got there is a kitchen knife it's very very old and, and very blunt you know it's uh, I don't, you don't need a really sharp knife so there's no need to risk chopping your fingers off or anything some people use a scalpel I saw something the other day which was about it was a scalpel which was ceramic and it seemed to be somehow safer than a, a metal blade but I wasn't completely convinced, I have to say. I'm going to have a good rub at the here because there's a line which I don't like, so I want to try and blend it in. Now, something I have done before with pastel is used a blending solution on them, and that's not only helps to blend it in so it's even, which um, I'm happy with that, I'm not going to blend anymore, but it also... Um, um, set it so it, it doesn't rub off the page. Okay, so I'm going to use a Stedler Erga soft pencil and I'm going to use number 35 to do some detailing on the jellyfish. So I'm, I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you now. There we go. I'm going to grab a piece of paper because I'm going to lean on some paper 
while I'm colouring because I don't want to get greasy fingerprints. That's a funny angle, isn't it? There we go. I don't want to get greasy fingerprints on the um, on the page. I know some people use their fingers to actually blend pastel, which is fine, but I find that if I go near pastel with my hands once I finish blending them with cotton wool, it can leave a big, blodgy, greasy fingerprint and I just can't get rid of it. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing, I'm going to try and just highlight bits of the jellyfish and I'm just doing more colour near the edge and I'm fading it off towards this top because I think that might be reflecting light. I don't know if there'd be much light under the sea but there'd be more likely to be any near the top. Um, you know, maybe it's near the surface. There we go. And now this bit, I'm not, I'm going to stick to the same colour the whole time. It's just a matter of doing different shading patterns. So I'm going to do some darker areas here and lighter here. Now, because we've got a background, the joy is you might be able to cover it with some white pencil as well if you wanted to add some highlights. I'm going to play with that idea in a minute. I don't know how good the Ergosoft white is. I've not really played with it very much, to be honest. So let's grab it and see. Here it is. I can tell you the number. It's number zero. It's, uh, it's pretty obvious. It's the white. Anyway, I'm going to try and just use some here. See if it shows up. I'm not really seeing anything. I don't think that's that's really doing anything. I don't think it's sitting on top of that pastel. Some whites are not particularly good. Um, a lot of whites, to be honest, aren't particularly good now. Although there are lines here, I'm going to start at the bottom here and just fade colour upwards like I did with the top. Um, whites, Prismacolor White is good, um, Derwent Lightfast, Caran d'Ache, um, the Caran d'Ache, what they're called Luminance White, they're all good whites, but the Ergosoft, the Polychromos, I don't find them particularly good. You can do a little bit with the Polychromos, it's better than this, but it's not brilliant. If you're doing, if you're using um, dark paper, oh, excuse me, I've got an itchy face. If you're using dark paper then they are better because obviously they've got more of a chance to show up but obviously not on top of pastel but of course it's probably trying to blend with the pastel rather than lay down on top of it. I'm just putting a little bit of colour in there. There we go. And here. I'm going to keep on with the same sort of idea. So do some darker bits here. Now with the with pastel, as I said before, when I've used pastel, I've um, often used um, fixative to keep it in place. Um, in this diary, in this planner, I haven't necessarily been doing so because the facing page is the diary page, and actually, I'm not going to be using the diary as a planner. I'm just purely using it as a colouring book, so I may not bother with fixative. It's also very cold and wet outside and fixative has to be sprayed outside so it's not good. I have done it before where I sprayed it inside but left the, left a door open near it but it just blew the smell into the house so it wasn't successful I wouldn't recommend doing that so uh, I just decided not to use it. You need to, ha you must use it in a ventilated area so uh, I've not been using it too much. I've got a picture I want to use some on that I'm going to be colouring after in pencil so I'm going to have to keep an eye on the weather and try and I'm just try and decide what to do with this but I might just leave it and uh, I might just fill in this bit instead and go up from there and leave it pale in the middle. Um, so yeah I need to keep an eye on the weather and uh, see what's uh, when it seems dry, I shall go and do it outside. It's also because if you have to leave the book outside for a while, you don't want to risk it suddenly raining on it, or you have to put it down somewhere. As you put it down on the ground, you don't want it to get wet. So it'd be a bit tricky this time of year, but we'll see. 
I might just uh, rub it in really hard and hope it doesn't come off. It's going to be a pale colour as well, so it might be okay. There we go. Now what to do? Now here, you see, we've got this bit sort of underneath. So I think this is going to be quite dark. So I'm going to go in quite dark here and then just lighten up a little bit as we... So keep it really dark under here where it would be shadowy. And then lighten it as we go down. So I'm actually really enjoying this planner. I've never had, um, I've never had one of these weekly planners before. And my sister gave it to me for Christmas. And I sort of thought, oh, I've not had that. And I looked at it, and it was very lovely. And uh, I've been really enjoying doing the pictures. And I hope it's been helpful for you guys who've got them to have a go as well. Now I'm going to ignore the tentacles and I'm going to push this up a little bit so you can see better. I'm going to work on this bit. Now we've got lines so we could sort of do it striped but I think I'm just going to fill in where I think the shadow will be. So down here. So there'll be shadow under here. This uh, is quite similar to this, isn't it? So it worked out quite well. That was the idea, to try and make it look like it could almost be a see-through jellyfish. And what we're seeing is just a bit of shadow and colour from the water coming through. But anyway, um, I've got a calendar, uh, one of the ones which is a month to view. Um, which I was given for 2017 and I haven't started colouring it yet so uh, I've been a bit naughty. That's a secret garden one. I tended to be colouring in the book and when I looked through it because the pictures are a bit bigger it felt a little bit daunting so uh, I sort of left it. I don't know if I really wanted to colour the ends of these but I'm doing it now. I need to fade this down a bit more I think. this up a bit. Anyway, um, and I've got two of the daily calendar boxes. I've nearly finished one of them. I think that was from 2017 as well. I might be getting a little muddled. It was a while ago. So um, when I finish that one I'll do a flip through of it. And some of it was done on the days when they were supposed to be done and some of it as I say I'm just finishing it now in 2021 so there'll be quite a difference in the uh, in the style I reckon I think that'll be quite interesting and sort of the beginning of the year I did it every day and then I got to July and I just stopped so I'm just catching up now but they're all out of order it's all messy so at the moment I'm doing July having done August and I did some of December's at Christmas, but it was all a bit weird. Some of them I've been using for videos as well, which is why they've all got muddled up. But anyway, it won't hurt too much. So now I'm just going to bring them together, fade it down. And I've also got, I've got the 2020 daily planner. I haven't coloured maybe one for a video, and that's all I've coloured. But uh, I'll get round to them sometime. I've got lots to do, lots of colouring to do. Let's push, push it up a bit again. See, I'm just leaning on this little piece of paper and it's actually getting a bit dirty from some of the pastel. I just rubbed my face as well. I've probably got blue pastel all over my face. It's lucky you can't see me. I should have washed my hands, but hey-ho. I decided not to, so uh, that's the way it is. I've just realised that the dishwasher is on behind me and you can probably hear it going chugging away behind so I'm really sorry for that I'm not a particularly professional um, videographer is that the right word? but uh, I'm learning I have these dreams of having a lovely little space where I could do it away from everyone else but 
it's difficult because my colouring materials are in one place I want to be able to film right near them At the moment it's I can't do that because of the situation with everyone working from home and being around all the time but uh, we'll see one day so now we've just got tentacles left I'm just going to zoom out a little bit to show you what, what's been done so far so you can see this and um, this does look quite bare but I'm thinking I'm going to leave that but I need to do the tentacles and I'm trying to decide I think what I'd do is I'd just do them quite lightly but we need them to stand out a bit from the water I think so I'm just doing them a bit darker here and then lighter through and I'm not going to darken them at the end I don't think I'm just going to keep them light and I have to do them all the same now well these circles I might just do I might not shade up that end just do them all the same and this one I'm leaning on the uh, rings here so I'm doing a little bit a few more layers of colour here and then lighter down here now this isn't going to be a massively colourful picture but uh, I think it's still interesting gosh that dishwasher is getting noisier I think I'm really sorry could go and stop it but I'll forget to put it back on and then I'll get into trouble right I think these lower tentacles were doing a similar way we start at the top now we've got little holes in them here little circles so I'm going to try and leave those empty of color so it looks like they're so they are holes I don't know whether tentacles do that I don't know much about jellyfish so uh, I'm just gonna slowly fade it down so there's less colour so there's more up here because it would be darker here under this sort of skirt I don't know, do they call it a skirt? I don't know I really don't know much about water creatures I'm not living near the sea That's, I think that helps sometimes though because I've got no idea what colour a lot of the things would be in the um, Lost Ocean book which this is obviously from so I just had to guess but I finished that one I have only had the one copy some books I've got lots of copies of I think this is a bit darker where it overlaps some books Lost Ocean only had one because the intricate detail I found a little bit tricky at the time but now I sometimes think I'd like to have another go at it at some point in time but because Johanna's got two new books coming out this year the uh, miniature enchanted forest and the worlds of wonder I think I've got plenty to do without getting more so I'm gonna slide my oh, my piece of paper is coming loose my page up a little bit and my paper down so I'm just gonna gently fade this down to the end now the only thing I noticed with the planner page is that you can often see through I can see I don't know if you can see but I can see lines coming through from the other side the paper is a little bit thinner than her regular books and I have heard some people complaining and saying they don't like it and I wouldn't go that far I think it's fine I'm quite pleased with the effects I get with it when I'm coloring but I think if I wanted to layer up lots then uh, it'd be tricky and I can't imagine it would work for watercolour pencils very well but uh, I just enjoy having a, a new variety of pictures to colour from books that I haven't got um, you know that I finished I like this one so it means I can come back and have a go at some lost ocean pictures okay so I'm just doing the same with every one of these I don't know if these are called tentacles because they're at the bottom I always think these are tentacles are these? I have no idea but anyway we're doing them all the same so just fading it down to the bottom so it looks consistent and it's really easy as well it's nice and gentle relaxing colouring which is what I need today this evening I'm actually filming in the evening it's hard to film in the daytime at the moment so uh, 
doing a little bit in the evening and uh, I've got my work finished quickly today sometimes I'm working until 7 and I'm a bit tired but uh, I didn't have to do any help with schooling today so that was good yesterday I was helping with Spanish which was a challenge as I've never learnt it right now we've finished the pencil work I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to look at it um, as a whole I'm going to look at it in real but you can look at it through the camera I'm going to look now I'm, I'm quite happy with that if you wanted to, I'm looking at this and still thinking it looks bare but I'm I don't know whether I want to add colour to it really I think I need to leave some of it so we've got a contrast and it looks more see-through so I'm going to leave it so my next part of this slightly experimental page is to do some bubbles now I've got my Sakura pens and I've got different nib sizes here I've got a 5, a 10 and an 8 I think I'm going to use the thick 10 and I've also got this trusty circular thing you can, don't have to use this sort of fancy thing you could use um, um, anything really um, anything round and I'm going to do some bubbles and I've got to choose the size I'm going to go quite big I'm going to go with this one and I'm going to use the white pen I've gone with the number 10 because it's the thickest nib and I'm going to just draw a circle now the thing I know that I'm going to have to be most careful of is picking this up so that I don't smudge the wet gel pen and then I'm going to do maybe a partial circle here off the edge of the page it might look a bit more natural do you think? there we go and one here I'm not actually going to do any on top of the jellyfish I'm just going to do them around it my son reckoned I should have done much smaller circles I was talking to him about my idea I think if it was a fish we might want to do some small ones for like air bubbles but I've got no idea if a jellyfish causes air bubbles I suppose it must do because it's got to breathe hasn't it now this one hopefully we won't smudge the one over there Try to make them even and random at the same time. It's often difficult to achieve that, but we'll see how we go. It's just a way of filling up this background. It looks quite bare. I think we'll put one there and make that do. Oh, that one's gone off the edge of the paper, I've just noticed. That's okay. There we go. Now these are quite faint, so I'm going to fill in a little bit here where I missed and I, what I want to do as well, which I think will work is to just do a little line like that I don't know if you can see, I'll zoom it in a bit so you can see so I've just done a little line now this one, I'll show you I'm just going to do a little line like that And this one's a bit faint, I've got to colour in this bit. I've got a blob there. There. And then do that white line. There. And this one looks fairly dark. Just do the line. And then up here. It's a bit faint down here, so I'm just going to fill that in Whoop, and go all wonky and wobbly. And this one. I'm just making sure you can see. This one's a bit faint here, so I'm just going to fill it in. And all around here it's really faint I think I had the pen on a bit of an angle of course now it doesn't look perfectly round but never mind 
and then down at the bottom here this one's really faint as well and I've got a bit of a splatty pen as well on this one just noticed I haven't used this one before it seems a bit splattery and then it doesn't want to write on this bit you know. just scrubbed on my newspaper I hope, it's, I hope everyone's read that paper. Oh, I haven't got it too dirty. It should be okay. So there we go. I finished that. I'm going to zoom out. I don't know how well you can see the bubbles and things. I'm zoomed out. Are quite faint because um, the pastel's quite light. But that's that's my um, that's my jellyfish. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it gave you for a few ideas. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you want to get notifications of when my videos come out. And, uh, and also, do let me know if you have any ideas of things that you'd like me to do. I'll be working through the planner and doing all sorts of other little bits and pieces as the ideas come to me. And if there's anything specific, I will see if I can do it and give it a go for you. So uh, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.